Hi, Paul here from Trekit and we've come out today, Harry and I, to talk to you about the latest addition to Osprey's Farpoint range. This is the new Farpoint Trek 75 and uh, the Farpoint Trek 75, as the name would uh, give you a clue there, it's a trekking pack but it's a kind of a cross between a trekking pack and a travel pack so it's perfect for those people who are constantly on the move, they need to carry the bag on their back but they want the kind of the versatility and the easy access of a travel bag. So it's perfect, like I said, for those people who are going off for some world travel, who are constantly moving, who might be doing some trekking, but want that versatility, ease of access, and the features that you get with a fully featured piece of travel luggage. So incredibly versatile. We're really excited about this. We think it is probably one of the kind of the best of its kind. Osprey have really thought about this. They've got plenty of experience both in travel and in trekking packs, and they bought that together in the new Farpoint Trek 75. Right, let's start with uh, what the Farpoint Trek 75 is made from. To ensure uh, a long life, durability, and the ability to shrug off those uh, kind of uh, incalcitrant luggage handlers at airports, this thing is made from super tough nylon. So Osprey have used a 500D pack cloth through the main sides of the pack here, over the top, and around the bottom, where the pack is going to get the most abuse. And over the front here, they used a 420 denier, slightly lighter weight, but still super tough nylon, just where you can reduce a little bit of weight and it's not going to get so much wear and tear. Uh, and the effect also is gives it a nice aesthetic. You get a nice lighter weight tone on the front here and a matte finish on the side. Just lifts the bag, makes it look a bit nicer. But first and foremost, it's about durability, toughness, and reliability. The fabrics themselves aren't waterproof, uh, but they have been treated with a DWR treatment, that's a durable water repellency. So during rain, snow, mist, etc., water will bead up and run off the pack uh, just to help you to yeah, keep the contents dry. Best advice for keeping the contents dry is to use dry bags. Sounds obvious, but that is the best thing to do. It also organises the contents of your pack nicely. We'll have a look inside a little bit later and I'll show you what I mean about that. So you've got this nice, super tough 500D nylon pack cloth and a 420D over the front here to give you durability, strength and reliability. Right, let's talk about the back system. This is the thing that gives the pack its great carrying capabilities and it's kind of the, you know, the, the backbone, if you like, of the whole pack. So the whole back system is built around a lightweight, light wire frame, which runs all the way around the pack here, right down onto these wide hip fins. And that transfers the weight really nicely down onto the hips when you're carrying the pack, gives the pack stability, but also gives it a little bit of flexibility so that you can move nice and easily. There's plenty of movement here, yet plenty of support. Suspended off that is an air mesh back system here, and that creates an air gap between you and the pack itself. So you get loads and loads of ventilation. Uh, if you're familiar with the uh, new Osprey Rook and Wren packs, you'll recognize this back system straight away. It comes straight from those packs. So it is a full, you know, bona fide trekking pack back system. So this air mesh system sits off your back, gives plenty of ventilation. And then the shoulder harness uh, is uh, fully padded and is also adjustable. You get these little toggles on the side here. So there's four little loops on the side and you pull these out, adjust it up and down, pop them back in to suit your torso length. So really nice and easy and adjustable to give you a good custom fit to make sure the carrying is 100% comfortable. If you're unsure about how to fit your rucksack, uh, Harry will put a link up here to one of our other videos which tells you about how to fit your pack properly and that gives some really good advice to make sure you get this shoulder harness in the right position and also the hip belt. So let's just stick with the shoulder harness for a moment. So if you've moved this all the way down, uh, what you don't want is these top tensioners kind of being in the wrong position. So if the harness is all the way down here, you don't want those all the way up there. So there are additional lashing points here for the top tensioners. So you just simply unthread from the top buckle, pop it down onto the bottom one there, and that'll ensure that the weight is just distributed properly over the shoulders and doesn't lift them too far out of position. Fully padded with soft contact area on the inside and you've also got a fully adjustable sternum strap with an emergency whistle on the buckle. 
Now you'll probably also notice here there's two uh, female halves of buckles, quick release buckles up on the shoulder straps here. And that's how you can attach uh, the daylight travel pack from Osprey. There's uh, straps on the top of their uh, daylight pack, clips into the top there. It means you can hang extra storage off the front of the pack, kangaroo style, just to give you extra versatility if you're traveling around with a, another little day pack. So moving down onto the hip belt, nice supportive hip belt, really nicely padded with that soft air mesh contact fabric on the inside. So nice and comfortable if you're just wearing light clothing forward pull hip belt so you can get it really locked in nice and tight onto your hips and there's also two little zip pockets on the outside there as well so that's the back system fully adjustable air mesh suspended comfortable really well ventilated and perfectly capable of carrying you know all the stuff that you're going to need when you're out on your worldwide adventures right let's have a look at the main features of this really versatile travel and trekking pack. Uh, the, the first thing you'll notice is access into the pack. Unlike a, a regular rucksack where you have to go in through the top, which is always a pain when you're trying to get your stuff, it's down the bottom of the bag. Uh, there's no top access into the bag here at all. The access is through this large main U-zip at the front, which basically means you can open up the whole of the bag, like a duffel bag or like a suitcase. Drop that open, easy access to the contents. Lay it down on a table, and there's all your stuff. Easy to find, easy to see, you can see exactly what's going on. So that's the main difference between this and a regular trekking pack, is that you don't have to faff around through draw cords and flaps over the top. You literally unzip it, bang, straight in. So we'll come back to that section a little later. What I'm gonna do now is just work through the bag, kind of top to bottom, and show you some of the external features before we get back on the inside. So up at the top, what looks like a traditional rucksack lid, and it isn't, you still get plenty of pockets. So you've got a great big pocket up at the top here. And I've got my uh, travel document wallets in there. Nice big pocket, easy to get to. And there's another pocket underneath that. And uh, inside there is Osprey's new air cover. Now this is a really ingenious piece of kit. It doubles up uh, as a transporter cover for the bag, which means that if you're traveling through airports or bus stations, railway stations, and you're not having it on your back and you want to protect your luggage in the hold uh, of an aircraft, for instance, where these straps might get caught or things like that, you can cover the whole bag up with this air cover. So you simply unzip it, throw it over the bag, zip it back up again. So that is the whole bag completely encased in a tough yet lightweight ripstop nylon bag. You've got a grab handle on here so that's the only thing those baggage handlers can grab so you're not going to get your, your compression straps ripped off, you're not going to get your hip belt ripped off, there's going to be no damage. Makes it really easy chucking it around. So that's a really ingenious bit of kit and the other good thing about it is is that when you're trekking with the bag it acts as a rain cover. So simply roll that section away and there's a little toggle on the bottom here and a little loop on the bottom of the pack and you simply pop the toggle through the loop secure it like so and there's another toggle on the side here and that corresponds with the toggle of the loop on the hip belt and again you just toggle that up we'll do some close-ups of this but i'm just going to quickly do this just to show you how it all fits same this side Find the toggle, find the loop. Tuck that down behind the corners of the frame. And there you have a rain cover. So when you're carrying the pack, you've still got access to the carrying system, but your pack is fully protected, waterproof, keeping the rain at bay. It's a really ingenious bit of kit. So well done Osprey on that one, really like that. Okay, let's just whip this off and then I'll carry on with the rest. So just so you don't forget where that is, there's a little label here that says air cover. So that's in that top zip at the bottom, underneath the top pocket there. 
Okay, staying up at the top, you've got some extra little webbing loops at the top here. So if you want to put some accessory cord or some bungee cord on here, strap things up onto the top. Nice big grab handle here, soft padded grab handle, picking up the pack nice and quickly and easily. And then moving down onto the side of the pack, you've got these side compression straps, just helps to pull the load into the bag. So if it's, it's not completely stuffed full of stuff, you can stop it all moving around with this side compression. And you also get uh, dual entry mesh size stretchy water bottle pockets on the bottom here. Dual entry because hopefully you'll have your trusty Trekkit water bottle with you. You can pop your bottle in from the top like so, or you can pop it in at an angle on the side like that. Now when you've got the bag on your back, it's much easier to access the water bottle when it's like that. You're not dislocating your shoulder to try and get it out the top of the pocket. So good design. Stretch mesh at the bottom, then you've got this heavy duty pack cloth right down here so the bottle's not going to wear through the bottom of the, of the mesh. So good pocket, good size, nice easy access. Same on both sides. On this side of the pack, you've got another grab handle. So if you want to carry it suitcase style, you can do. And then moving on to the front of the pack, you've got uh, Osprey's really good straight jacket compression. So the straps across the front of the pack here pull a, a, a sort of a section of webbing material. So when you tighten them up, it actually pulls the whole of the side of the pack over into the middle, really compressing the load down, helping to keep things under control. It's a really good system. And just unclip that. And then underneath the straight jackets, you get more cord accessory loops. So if, again, if you want to lace up some bungee or some accessory cord, you can create some additional storage. But what you can also do is attach the uh, standard daylight pack uh, using the toggle and the loop system onto the front of the pack to give you even more storage. Uh, and then the straight jacket compression straps will go over the top of that and secure that in place. Down the bottom here, you get uh, sleeping pad straps, as Osprey call them. Basically, it allows you to, uh, if you've got a foam roll mat, you can pop those open, pop the roll mat through here. If you don't want to use them, you can simply unthread them, take them off, or you can use them again as compression straps. If the bag is partially laden, you can tighten that up, pulls the bottom in, keeps it all under control. Okay, so like a regular trekking pack, you do get another access into the bottom of the bag here, straight in. So I've got my sleeping bag in there. And there's a little internal divider on the inside here, which just stops, keeps those, stops the uh, contents blending together, if you like, keeps them separate. And there's a sneaky little zip pocket on the bottom of it. If you want to hide away your passport or something like that, keep it out of, uh, keep it out of view. The divider can be easily removed, so you can have one compartment all the way through or leave it in place if you just want to separate your kit out. And up on the front here, you get another big zip pocket which runs the whole length of the front from the top to the base compartment. Uh, I've just got some reading material in there, I've got some magazines, I've got a book. But you could put whatever you want in there. It might be a good place to put kind of wet waterproofs if you want to keep them separate from the contents. Pop them away on the inside. Okay, so let's go into the inside and we'll talk through what's going on in there. So, like I said earlier, you've got your internal divider, which can be uh, simply toggled up or removed. And then on the inside here, my old Tilly hat, you've got another internal compression system, like these compression fins, which pull the contents in, stop them rattling around inside your bag. And you can see here that I've got my contents neatly organized into dry bags, obviously to keep the contents dry, but to keep them organized. So I've got my, got my mozzie net in there, my first aid kit, waterproofs, water filter, head torch, clothing, flip-flops, you name it, it's all in here. I've got enough for months of travel, absolutely months of travel, all neatly organized and kept under control with this clever internal compression system. And again, much like on the base compartment, there's another little zip pocket here on the inside just really handy for keeping things you just want to keep out of our, keep out of you know general view passports money bits and pieces tuck it away in there keep them secure and that's just on this one side not on the other side and then underneath everything let's just take everything out 
Sorry, Harry, I'm probably spoiling your beautiful laid up camera shot now. And then on the inside of the bag, there is a hydration sleeve as well. So you easily get a three litre hydration bladder in there. Little security loop at the top, stop it drooping down. And then your hose comes out into the middle of the back system here. Okay, so there you have it, the new Osprey Farpoint Trek 75. It's a fully fledged trekking pack. It's a fully fledged travel pack. It kind of does everything really, really well. It's the perfect bag for those who are going to go off for more adventurous travel expeditions. It's, uh, it's great for those going off and doing just some world travel, going away for the weekend, you name it. It's, it's just a really versatile, easy to use travel and trekking pack that blends the best of both worlds to give you the perfect piece of kit. Okay, so if you have any, uh, if you have any questions or you have any comments, please pop them in the section below. It's always good to hear from you. It's always good to know that you, uh, you like watching the videos or not. Uh, if you do like watching them, please subscribe, hit the subscribe button and uh, you'll be kept up to date with any new videos, new product videos, products of uh, videos about what we get up to here at Trekit. So yeah, please subscribe. It'd be good to have you on board. Harry, I'll put a link up here, which will link you through to the product page on our website. If you want to geek out on some more details, have a look at more pictures, etc., or even buy one, who knows? All right, so uh, I'm going to pack up now, say cheerio, and see you again next time. Thanks a lot.